Now let's sit you guys right here. Move the car, just a little smidge. Lined up, perfect. Uh, hi everyone, College Railroader here. You know, there's nothing better than giving your layout life by adding figurines in buildings. At first, it may not look like a lot, but once a completed city or town is finished, it brings a lot of life into your layout. And that's really what the theme of this month's video is. Giving your layout a story. Giving your layout a story does not necessarily mean that you have to have a backstory for every building or figure. Rather, it's about having each building contain a purpose for the people living in the town and for the railway. You want your layout to blend and look as authentic as possible. And so the tip for this month in terms of giving your layout a story is by establishing a time period for your layout and by having buildings that reciprocate your freight and passenger cars. The best way to get buildings to blend together is by having buildings that are all from the same time period. The benefit with time eras in model railroading is that you always have a window of around 25 years to work with. And that is because buildings and trains in real life are much older than 20 years. And so you have that nice window to play around with. So if you want some buildings, if you're trying to do like a modern day period and you have some buildings that look like they're from the 90s or even the 70s, um, if you are doing like an older city, you know, there are buildings well over 30 years old. Um, so you can have those fit um, in that city as well as having some modern day ones. As long as you don't have them kind of stick out, for example, you don't want like an old town building um, you know, for this building, for example, right? This kind of old fashioned building. You don't want that to be right next to um, a big skyscraper or like um, a big flashy building that has like all windows. They don't really fit well together. Um, and I know in real life, certain cities are able to pull off that kind of look when it comes to it. Um, that just has to really do with research, really looking at how do real life um, cities are able to kind of blend buildings together. Sometimes they do a good job, other times they don't, um, but researching that is really helpful. Now this tip also plays with your trains besides buildings. For example, if you have a big new city and you have an old locomotive pulling coal cars, it's going to stick out. It does not look accurate at all. But if you replace that old locomotive with a diesel, and instead of pulling coal cars, they pull gravel or oil cars, it blends much better. And so the main takeaway on this part is to really do research, like I said before, about where your town takes place, both geographically and time period wise. Uh, for my layout specifically, we're more in a New England semi-metropolitan uh, area. And so for us, you know, we didn't pick a real city or town um, to mimic this, rather we took different areas and different trains and um, train companies that we personally like where we shop for model trains. We find a lot of New York Central and Pennsylvania and Problems in Worcester, so it's easy and more accessible for us to grab those because we live right in those real railways. But your town does not have to be based off of a real town. Like I said before, you can pick and pull different attributes from other towns and have them all kind of coexist together. Um, but like I said before, you really have to do your research. But yeah, so just having those um, different ideas and knowing what you want in terms of what buildings you know will fit better and how you'll be able to blend them is a really good thing to do. Now having a story for your layout also means that the buildings you have should also reciprocate what types of buildings that would normally be used for the railway. For example, if you have a lot of oil tank cars, maybe you should look into getting a little oil refinery having that purpose of why would the trains be carrying oil cars, for example, if there was no purpose for them in the town? That's kind of what you have to think about. For example, I have a long, I have a long uh, train of cars out of here. They're all refrigeration cars. So what I want to kind of invest and start looking for is I have a little uh, building that's kind of like a freight depot. That's what I've kind of looked into. I know it's really more of a station, but I want to kind of build like a nice platform for it or kind of fix it up. But I also want to get like a supermarket. Why else would they be bringing refrigeration cars full of food or whatever cold items 
if it wasn't going to be used in this town. And with just those examples alone, there's now a story as to why those buildings are in the town and why are those cars being pulled by the trains that are also in your town. And having that reciprocation between uh, railway and buildings, it will definitely make your layout look more authentic. And it'll also kind of give your layout new life as how everything blends together like the real world. So it's just really looking at what you have already, uh, what other cars you're looking for, what do you want to invest in, and kind of what you want your town to represent or what you want your town to look like. And just like that, you're on the right track. I'll see you real soon when we come back. Thank you so much for watching the College Railroader today. Be sure to look out for more videos coming soon. Take care, folks.